The ordeal began when Richard Heaney, the boy's dad, was reportedly testing his weather balloon in the backyard. Falcon's brother told officials he saw the boy get inside and float away. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most dastardly lies and deliberate distortions that fooled people throughout history. This was a very elaborate, very sophisticated hoax perpetrated for reasons we can't fully understand. Number 20, Napoleon is dead. On the morning of February 21, 1814, during the Great French War, one Colonel Dubourg arrived in Dover, England, to tell everyone that a victory for the Allies was inevitable because Napoleon had been killed. News quickly spread to London, leading the stock market to boom. Three men in particular profited more than others. Lord Thomas Cochrane, Cochrane Johnstone, and Richard G. Butt had purchased thousands of pounds in stocks just two days before. However, the news of Napoleon's death was false, and the London Stock Exchange crashed. Dubourg himself was also a fabrication. He was actually a Prussian aristocrat named Charles Random de Beringer, who planned this fraud with Cochrane, Johnstone, and Butt. Over at him yelling about a couple of stock tips, made a little call. And still couldn't afford a haircut. Number 19, Go Ask Alice. Go Ask Alice. When she's 10 feet tall. At the end of the psychedelic era, when long-term effects of recreational drugs were coming to light, this book claimed to be the real diary from an anonymous teenager's descent into sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Now don't be dreaming. <laughs> it immediately became a bestseller. Tapping into the public spheres of rebellious youth culture, Go Ask Alice seemed like the perfect cautionary tale for the time. Like they're trying to poison me. No, no they aren't. Enjoy it. You're going to have a beautiful trip. But it wasn't a real account. The book was actually written by Beatrice Sparks, a Mormon youth counselor. Sparks eventually admitted some parts were fabricated, but she insisted the majority of the book was from the diary of a teenager she met at a conference. Yet nowadays, although it's officially classified as fiction, many educators still assign the book as nonfiction. Number 18, Live Megalodons. The video was shot by a father and a son who had come across a whale that had suffered a brutal attack. Known for their documentaries, the Discovery Channel seems like a reliable source. But during Shark Week 2013, they ran a mockumentary called Megalodon, The Monster Shark Lives, without explicitly disclosing the false nature of the program. The whale looks to be almost bitten in half. It's absolutely insane. Instead of a pre-show disclaimer, they opted to say that some events were dramatized and that the existence of giant sharks is up for debate. While the Megalodon was a real creature, it's been extinct for at least three million years. Viewers were understandably irritated that a previously serious science education network stooped to pranks during its most popular week of programming. Number 17, Raelian Clones. According to Realism, a new religious movement founded in 1974, human immortality is possible through cloning. So, proving that human clones are possible would help their credibility, right? Raelians therefore claimed that the first human clone was born on December 27, 2002. The parents are happy, and I hope that you remember them when you talk about this baby, not like a monster. The news was widely covered and sparked wide moral outrage. The baby girl called Eve was born yesterday in Hollywood, Florida. But so far, the scientists at CloneAid have refused to identify the parents or provide a picture of the baby. But when it came time for CloneAid, the scientific company run by Realism, to prove the achievement, they refused. CloneAid and Raelian still insist their clone was real and that more have been born. But without proof, they've been written off as hoaxes. We don't know about their credentials. We don't know where they did it. Number 16, the Tosade tribe. Manuel Elizalde, the head of a Philippine government agency, claimed he discovered a tribe of indigenous people secluded in a forest. The supposed discovery garnered immense interest, with National Geographic and the Associated Press reporting on it. The tribe lives high in the mountainous rainforest. The Tassadai call the helicopter Manuk Dakal, the big bird. Elizalde was known to work closely with the Philippine dictator Ferdinand Marcos, who kept the area under martial law. That was pretty suspicious to start with. The grandparents are Kulatau and Sikul. They are the oldest members of the tribe. 
probably in their 50s. Evidence began to pile up that the Tassade were part of a hoax when their tools, population growth, and food sources were examined. And then, journalist Oswald Eaton paid them an unexpected visit in 1986, discovering modern clothing and tools. Some people even admitted to pretending to be Tassade. They were never cavemen then, or stone age uh, culture practicing people then. And they never were when the uh, uh, cave story was being uh, presented to the world, and they never are today. Number 15, The Great Moon Hoax. A New York newspaper, The Sun, published a series of six articles about the discovery of life and civilization on the moon. And he said, if you believe that there are lunarians, creatures on the moon, I will give you lunar man bats. Starting on August 25th, 1835, these articles claimed the well-known astronomer Sir John Herschel spotted fantastical creatures such as unicorns and bipedal beavers. Herschel was amused by it all at first, though it soon became a bother for him to tell people the reports were false. The paper didn't skimp on details, making this ruse all the more believable. The people of New York, and subsequently of America generally, had been so schooled in the ideas of these religious astronomers that when these articles came out, they simply believed them. The writers specified the measurements of the telescope, where it came from, and how it was accidentally destroyed in a fire. The hoax was believed for several weeks, during which the sun gained a wide readership. Number 14, Manti Teo's Girlfriend. The term catfishing first became popular after a film about the common internet scam was released in 2010. But it really blew up in 2012, when it was revealed that college footballer Manti Teo's dead girlfriend, Lene Kakua, wasn't actually dead, or real. She made me promise that she said, babe, if anything happens to me, you promise that you'll stay over there and that you'll play. As it turned out, Teo had been tricked into having a deeply emotional online relationship with a person named Renaya Tuyasasopo. Even though he was the victim of the con, Teo sadly became the butt of countless jokes after the truth of the scam came out. And all of a sudden, it's silence. That silence really eats at you. Ten years after the hoax, in August 2022, Netflix released a documentary on the subject. And I want everybody to know that if Renaya ever watched this, then I forgive him. Number 13, William H. Mumler's Ghostly Photographs. Spiritualism, or the belief that the living can communicate with the dead, was all the rage in the U.S. after the Civil War. Photographer William H. Mumler took full advantage of this craze and shot pictures of clients with the ghosts of their deceased loved ones in the background. In reality, Mumler superimposed old negatives of lookalikes onto photographs of clients, leading them to believe their dearly dead were visiting. Mumler avoided being revealed by saying that the ghosts come and go without explanation. However, he got into hot water when some ghosts turned out to still be alive. I thought they were supposed to be dead. The awkward aftermath led to a trial for fraud, though Mumler was acquitted. We now know the photos were faked, but they're still eerie. Number 12, Poirier. After years in high-ranking military positions under Simon Bolivar, Scotsman Gregor McGregor ended his stay in Venezuela and headed for Nicaragua. In 1820, in an effort to start a colony, he went to England to advertise the beautiful land of Poirier, of which he was the prince. Over 200 eager settlers made the long journey from Europe to Central America to try their luck. Even national banks invested in Poirier, but the location was actually an uninhabitable, mosquito-ridden swamp, and more than half the settlers died. Otto, are you sure this is the right place? A less deadly scam involved George Salmanazar scandalizing much of Europe with lurid, gripping, and totally fictionalized tales of his supposed homeland of Formosa in the early 18th century. Number 11, Cottingley Fairies. Anybody who's interested in you know, the history of our times knows these images. Between 1917 and 1920, Elsie Wright and Francis Griffiths took a series of photographs in a garden in Cottingley, Yorkshire, England, which appeared to show themselves with fairies. These pictures were just a charming game to their families, until Wright's mother Polly exhibited them at a lecture on fairies at the Theosophical Society. So when the first photographs were taken in 1917, they were really only shown to the family, weren't they? They weren't intended for family consumption. They caused an uproar, especially because no photographers would confirm or deny the authenticity. Even Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, creator of Sherlock Holmes, believed the photographs to be evidence of fairies. 
Public interest generally faded for a few decades, but in 1983, Elsie Wright confessed to having cut and pasted drawings into the photographs. Griffiths, however, never owned up to the lie. You grew up with your mother Frances. Did she ever talk about it? No. She was very ashamed of it. She was ashamed of the deception. Number 10. Millie Vanilli R&B duo Millie Vanilli exploded on the dance pop scene in the late 80s, only to crash soon afterward. Girl, you know it's true. Uh. Ooh, 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 I love you. In 10 months, their debut album reached six times platinum in the US. Producer Frank Farian catapulted them to fame, and they had very little, if any, creative input under his watch in the studio. Then came the public lip syncing. On July 21, 1989, while performing in front of 80,000 people, their hit song Girl You Know It's True glitched and repeated the same line over and over. Millie Vanilli won Best New Artist that year, but it was later revoked. We were famous, now we're infamous, just like that. But who was really to blame for the whole deception? I'm doing a show on 80s train wrecks. Maybe I slip you in after that Millie Vanilli guy, all right? Number 9. Piltdown Man After the publication of Charles Darwin's seminal work, scientists searched for more fossil links of human ancestors. In 1912, archaeologist Charles Dawson claimed to have found one in Piltdown, East Sussex, England. He discovered a skull fragment, which attracted the attention of the British Museum and spawned further searches. After uncovering more pieces, including bits of jaw and some teeth, Dawson reconstructed the skull and declared it legitimate. However, other scientists were skeptical, especially because they couldn't find more bones in the area. Eventually, the Piltdown finds were found to be 50,000 years old, not 500,000. And they were from both humans and apes. In November 1953, Time magazine published an expose on the fraud, effectively ending the hoax decades after it began. The Piltdown Man hoax wasn't uncovered for 40 years until it failed a carbon dating test, and that wasn't even very good. Number 8. Mary Toft's Offspring Way before ultrasounds were possible, a woman was believed to have given birth to rabbits. This happened in Godalming, Surrey, England in 1726, and it tricked medical professionals and laypeople alike. After local doctor John Howard attested to the unusual births, the news spread and Toft became something of a celebrity. Even the British royal family got involved. Toft herself was soon transported to London for more thorough examination. After a couple of months of fame and great confusion, Toft was pressured to admit that her husband had purchased small animals in order to fake birthing scenes. Number 7. Balloon Boy Some events are so newsworthy, so historic, that you have to stop everything to watch. Balloon Boy, Michael Jackson's funeral. On October 15, 2009, Colorado couple Richard and Mayumi Heaney released a large balloon, only to quickly call the police in a panic, saying their son Falcon was trapped in it. The boy had climbed into a box attached to the bottom of the balloon at his home in Fort Collins, and somehow it took off. Local police, worldwide news agencies, and National Guard helicopters followed the balloon for more than 50 miles until it landed. However, Falcon was not inside. Reports that something had fallen out sparked a longer search, but the boy was eventually found in his parents' attic. In an interview with Wolf Blitzer, Falcon accidentally revealed that his parents told him it was a game to hide in the attic. We did this for the show. Yeah. No. Richard and Mayumi ended up facing jail time, probation, community service, and fines. I was telling them it was all a mistake. Hope was hiding in the attic the whole time. Just like that balloon boy guy. Yeah, but that guy went to jail. Really? Yeah. Number six, the Cardiff Giant. While digging a well on William Newell's farm in Cardiff, New York in 1869, Gideon Emmons and Henry Nichols claimed to have found a massive petrified human body. Weighing 3,000 pounds and measuring 10 feet, this giant immediately caused a stir. Most scientists agreed it was a fraud, but most theologians and preachers testified to its authenticity, citing a verse in the Bible about giants. Somewhere in there, the conversation gets to Goliath. That is, you, you don't really believe there's a 12-foot-tall giant getting killed by this puny little guy with a sling, and the minister says, it's in the Bible, it's true. Despite the divide, the find was a sensation, and Newell began charging admission to see it. After showman P.T. Barnum unsuccessfully tried to buy the attraction, he made his own giant, leading both cadavers to be revealed as fakes. You planted a phony skeleton for me to find. This was all a big hoax. 
<laughs> Not a hoax, a publicity stunt. Number five, the Amityville Horror. The only thing that they got right is that our family moved in that house and we left. On November 13th, 1974, Ronald DeFeo Jr. killed six family members in his house in Amityville, New York. In December 1975, George and Kathy Lutz moved into the same house, only to flee 28 days later. They said they were terrorized by supernatural forces. Now, why did you come by tonight to look at this house? To see what that book was all about and everything about the house, the way it looked, and all the things that people say about it. This curious chain of events inspired author Jay Anson to write a book titled The Amityville Horror, which led to a series of horror movies starting in 1979. Get out! However, DeFeo's lawyer later admitted to making up all the horror with the Lutz family for financial gain. But the Lutzes have never acknowledged their lie. That didn't happen. Again, that's Hollywood portraying the story. Number four, Bauer and Chorley's crop circles. Crop circles definitely aren't new phenomena, but there has been a sharp uptick in cases since the 1970s, becoming somewhat of a global trend. Part of this increase is definitely due to Doug Bauer and Dave Chorley, two men who deliberately created plenty of crop circles in England from around 1978 through the next decade or so. They later confessed to doing it all as a prank, but the appearance of crop circles still makes the rounds as a popular conspiracy theory. We wanted to make the UFO society think that a UFO had landed, you see. And um, after a few years, they, they didn't know whether to believe it or not. There's a name for people who believe to varying degrees that crop circles are signs, wonders, or prophecies. They are referred to as croppies. So on reflection, I think he, he believed that it had got out of control. He couldn't control it anymore. Number three, Hitler's diaries. West German magazine Stern thought they had gotten their hands on a miraculous discovery in 1983, 60 volumes of journals written by Adolf Hitler. After paying a huge amount for the rights, the magazine published excerpts of the diaries and sold serialization rights of the material to the British newspaper The Sunday Times and the American paper Newsweek. However, the authenticity of the discovered documents was immediately questioned. After testing showed that the ink, glue, and papers were too modern for wartime Germany, the forger was revealed to be conman Konrad Kuyau. Two editors for Stern and others eventually lost their jobs for spreading misinformation. The so-called confession is just as phony as the Howard Hughes will, the Hitler diaries, or the emancipation retraction. Number two, Roswell autopsy footage. July 8, 1947 put Roswell, New Mexico on the map for conspiracy theorists. Alien enthusiasts have kept up with the site of the purported UFO crash for decades. They were rewarded for their patience in 1995 when British entrepreneur Ray Santilli released footage supposedly showing an autopsy on aliens in 1947. The 17 minutes of film aired to mass audiences on TV networks across the world. But many viewers and experts remained skeptical, citing inconsistent injuries on the alien and inaccurate autopsy methods. I think she described four fingers rather than six, so there's a discrepancy or difference there. In 2006, Santilli admitted the footage was in fact faked, though he also insisted that it's a reconstruction and restoration of real film and still frames. The person operating the camera continuously moves to a place repeatedly that he's not going to see anything, the doctor's back, and, and doesn't make the effort to go around the other side to, to look at the saw coming towards you and perhaps get a better view. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The War of the Worlds Radio Broadcast An infamous Halloween radio broadcast aired in the U.S. on October 30, 1938. Orson Welles directed and narrated a radio drama of H.G. Wells' classic sci-fi novel The War of the Worlds, portraying the events of a Martian invasion. Although the program started at 8 o'clock with an announcement declaring it fiction, not everyone tuned in on time, leading some people to believe that aliens had actually landed in New Jersey and were quickly conquering the United States. It really was the, the 1938 version of clickbait. Local police departments were flooded with phone calls asking for verification and protection. Although the ensuing panic has been exaggerated over time, the fact is that people were ready to believe in an alien apocalypse. Have you fallen for anything that was later proven to be a hoax? Let us know in the comments. You exploited people's deepest beliefs just to hawk your cheesy wares? 
Well, we are outraged, aren't we? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we're outraged. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.